and we will move to questions to the Chairman and Cabinet members until the 45-minute continuous period for questions and answers has ended. Councillor Stokes. Question 35 to the Chairman of the Stands Committee. Deputy Chairman, apologies. Thank you. I'm sure that I speak for the independent chairman and the whole standards committee when I agree with the councillor, Mrs. Stokes' judgment of the Standards Board for England. The Standards Board, uh, Quango, set up the local government standards framework, which was overblown and wasteful. And from a local government's perspective, time wasting on the most trivial of complaints. Wandsworth can pride itself on the consistently high standards of councillors' behaviour and now that the Localism Act 2011 is in place, a streamlined standards framework with a voluntary new code of conduct will be recommended to the council in February. This will be without bureaucratic burden of the previous regime. Supplementary, Madam Mayor. I thank the Deputy Chairman for her response. Will the framework and procedures under the Localism Act guarantee political impartiality and standards committees with real teeth? Well, our, our committees certainly are, are, are equal in politics. We'd never believe to have somebody that was absolutely against all the other uh, people on the committee. Although I did meet somebody when I was on the assembly and this person, Ken Livingston, you know, he, he was doing something very badly. We thought we'd get him, and we should have got him. But he went around all the independent members and the Labour members uh, and didn't touch a Conservative because he knew he wouldn't get to it very far. And so I'm afraid we are delighted. Well, I'm absolutely delighted to be uh, Deputy Chairman of uh, this Standards Committee. Thank you. Councillor Cooper. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, whilst in this council it's been some years since uh, there were any scandals of any uh, nature, um, would she agree that there have been issues in a number of other councils? And whilst the introduction of the standard boards and the standards regime may seem um, over heavy to us here, that perhaps in some other places it fulfilled um, a task uh, that was essential. And moving to uh, the point about the balance of the committee, uh, would she not agree that some of the requirements that will be placed upon it as a result of the Localism Act mean that we do have some issues in retaining our independent members and also in retaining political balance? Both things I'm sure she would agree are absolutely essential for all members in this council to remain, retain confidence in our ongoing standards arrangements. Well, I can't believe that the independent members that we hopefully get uh, to join us on the Standards Board would be anything other than actually very um, uh, honest about their, about their beliefs. Um, and uh, I'm surprised that you would think that there would be somebody as an independent member who would not be true to, their, to our beliefs. And I mean, when I mean ours, I mean yours as well. And, uh, and so I think we'll get a pretty good uh, bunch of people coming on with us. Councillor Walsh. Thank you, Madam Mayor. To ask question 20, 36 of the uh, Chairman of the Licensing Committee. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. I thank Councillor Walsh for his question. In, in short, the uh, committee uh, took the welcome opportunity to freeze charges in what we know to be a potentially difficult period for traders. And although the committee has warned that it's likely that charges will need to rise in uh, 2013, eight members can rest assured that the council will continue to keep a tight control of costs and so any uh, increase that has to be applied then will be as small as possible. And then, um, Councillor Fairbrother. A question 37 to the Chairman, the licensing. Uh, 
As I mentioned in the uh, reply to, um, in, the written question, in the written answer, there is much in the CDMS proposals that should be welcomed. And the licensing committee I unanimously endorsed uh, uh, those points, but expressed serious reservations about the deregulation of music events, which would apply to all venues in uh, Wandsworth, uh, with the possible exception of events at the former Battersea Power Station. That's fair, brother. Um, I thank the chairman for his answer, which I'm like the licensing committee in broad agreement. However, I'm not sure that placing reliance on the noise team uh, is the way forward, especially when the hours of service of that team have been cut as part of the cost reduction program. Surely the key question is, is on what grounds is DCSM proposing these reforms in that narrow area of um, the playing of music, etc. Um, it's just so out of step with what the public want. Precisely, uh, Mr. Mayor, and that's why we've objecting to, uh, why, why we've objected very strongly uh, to the proposals. At the moment, we do rely on the noise team, not only to uh, deal with uh, complaints after the event, but to advise the committee on uh, applications for licenses so we can put the appropriate conditions on them. So uh, the, the um, uh, reductions in the noise team that Councillor Fairbrother mentioned uh, have no relevance in this discussion here. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, is the uh, Chairman um, slightly surprised that um, presumably a, a scribbler from a think tank has managed to get so far and actually sort of penetrate the department, the DCMS, and get this uh, not very well thought through um, piece of deregulation, um, you know, to the point of consultation? Thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. The um, fact is that it's not all of the consultation exercise which is wide of the mark. There is much of it which is very sensible and which is supported by members on uh, both sides. For example, one of the proposals is the deregulation of Punch and Judy shows. Um, why on earth uh, we've regulated Punch and Judy shows, shows for the last uh, few decades is nonsense. But there are things like that. that it, uh, there are also... Um, uh, venues such as ballet schools, which we would welcome deregulation uh, in. Uh, why on earth uh, they've gone so far as to propose uh, the deregulation of all music events under 5,000, I really cannot answer that, and you should write to the minister responsible. Councillor MacDonald. Uh, question 38 of the Chamber of Licensing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I thank Councillor MacDonald for his uh, question. Uh, as I mentioned in my reply um, earlier, there is much in the CDMS proposals that should be welcomed, and the licensing committee uh, endorsed those points unanimously, but they did express severe reservations about the one point of the consultation, which is the de deregulation of uh, music events, which, as I've said, uh, would apply to all venues, with the possible exception of Battersea Power Station. Yes, uh, can I ask uh, the uh, chairman if he could be slightly more specific as to what steps he's actually taken to voice and where possible to mitigate his misgivings? Well, I think um, what we've uh, done as a result of the committee decision is to attempt to enlist the support of our three uh, local members of parliament. haven't had any response yet as far as I'm aware, but it will be important uh, for those uh, MPs to know of our serious concern. We've also sought to try and enlist cooperation with other local authorities. Uh, as I understand it, almost every local authority in the country is opposing uh, the change to um, music deregulation. Councillor Mrs McDermott. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, question 39 to the Chairman of the Licensing Committee. I thank uh, Councillor Mrs McDermott for her uh, question.
question. Uh, as uh, you can see from the detailed reply, uh, most reviews are requested not by individuals, uh, members of the public, but by trading standards uh, officers or the police. I think the list of reviews that I've uh, given in the written answer should encourage individuals to engage with the process as the one application which was promoted by um, local residents and uh, those residents came along to the committee, they were successful. And I think uh, there are lessons to be learnt there from other groups of residents who perhaps feel uh, that there is no point in asking for a review. Supplementary. Um, thank you for your answer. And I'm particularly pleased you uh, refer to, I think you're referring to PJs in Ballam High Road. But would the Chairman of Licensing agree that reviews are an excellent way for the public to get a good night's sleep if noise goes, um, gets too, too high? And would he agree also that um, if musical entertainment is not regulated, there would be no chance for a review, uh, for a review, review and PJs, particularly of interest to us in Nightingale and I know Bedford Ward, would still be pounding out their music into the early hours of the morning? Um, venues. Uh, there, she mentions uh, reviews if the new legislation that's proposed is introduced. Well, there won't be anything to review and all that the council would be able to do uh, if there was a noisy venue on a number of occasions would be to uh, seek the uh, noise team who would have to monitor the location uh, for a number of uh, occasions before they took action under noise legislation. That's after the event. I think we would be much better off sticking with the proactive stance uh, we have at the moment, where generally speaking, uh, we can condition venues so they don't cause a nuisance in the first place. Councillor Carpenter. Question 40 to the Chair of the Audit. Um, on behalf of the um, Chairman of the Audit Committee, I'd like to refer Councillor Carpenter to the written answer. Um, firstly, what I would like to point out is that the average time for a school audit report to be completed is normally eight weeks, um, and the six months that it took in this case is clearly not good enough at all. Um, now, the Head of Audit has already raised this matter with the auditors, and clearly their performance does need to improve and like Councillor Carpenter, I'm very dissatisfied with the auditor's performance and the fact that they've taken so long to complete this particular audit report. Um, as indicated in the written answer, the chairman will bring this up at the next committee, which is in January. Councillor Carpenter. Uh, thank you for that answer. Uh, I, I share uh, the concern about delays. Where there are Category 1 uh, items of concern, uh, quite clearly, do you agree with me that uh, a delay of this can mean that we are going to be shutting the stable door after the horse, whether gift or otherwise, has bolted? I can only agree. <laughs> Councillor Daly. Uh, question 41 to the Chairman of the Pensions Committee. Sorry, I, I, don't, I hate to interrupt Councillor Senior, but could you put them? And uh, the way the Council's portfolio is constructed has actually outperformed uh, a passive portfolio by a considerable amount of money. Supplementary. Um, I thank the Cabinet Member for his answer there. Um, 
I think this answer is a little bit disingenuous. Uh, it, it makes rather a crude comparison. The idea that we would put 70% of our pension fund into a UK FTSE tracker is not particularly realistic. Uh, and it doesn't respond to the point that uh, individual fund managers can underperform the index, uh, and they have done in the short term. Um, so uh, would the chairman or the cabinet member on behalf of the chairman uh, agree that it might be worth taking another look at the issue uh, given the recent poor underperformance by a few managers in the last six months to a year. I thank the Council for the supplementary question. Yes, I quite agree that we will, uh, as we explained at the committee, be taking a further look at this issue next time we uh, review the performance of the particular underperforming manager uh, that Councillor Daly has uh, referred to. And it may be appropriate at the moment to move uh, to a different strategy. Now, as many members will know, I actually work for a very large uh, index tracking investment manager, uh, which does not actually uh, have the council's account, I, I should stress. So it's something I, I know about, and indeed a lot of my personal investments are with index trackers, but are not necessarily a solution to everything. And particularly we've seen in the current uh, falling markets, when if you track the index, the risk you are ta taking will actually be considerably greater than having a slightly more... Um, uh, flexible strategy which might allow you to go into fixed interest or in, into gilts or into bonds or indeed uh, to uh, uh, concentrate on certain more defensive stocks than purely tracking an index. So it's not a panacea but all these methods need to be looked at because overall we have an exceptionally well founded uh, p uh, pension fund. Indeed I believe the only one who's funded better, funnily enough, is in Redcar. Not declaring a personal interest. Right, can we move on to the next question then, Councillor Morritt? Um, uh, question number 42, Madam. I thank the Councillor for his question. Yes, as the Councillor is probably well aware, we have long taken the view uh, uh, that uh, the current public sector pension regime is unaffordable in the long term and does need reforming. Supplementary, Madam Mayor. Um, Labour's former Cabinet Minister, Lord Hutton, uh, says that the gloomy economic outlook only strengthens the need for reform, negotiation and discussion. Uh, could the Cabinet member share with us some advice as to how he would go about that? I think to recognise that the current situation is very different from what it was 20 or 30 years ago, indeed, when these schemes were first established. At the time, people would retire from the council at the age of 65 and, sadly, die within two or three years. So these pensions were easily affordable at the time. Times have changed. Thankfully, people live a great deal longer and, therefore, the cost of these pensions increases dramatically. And that's why the council is having to produce an enormous amount of high percentage of, of uh, em employees' salaries uh, into the pension fund to keep it in the reasonable order that it is. We do need to look at changes, particularly to new, new employees and moving them away uh, from the current scheme, and we do need to look at changes for existing uh, employees where it may be possible uh, to change, for example, the accrual rates so we still provide a decent pension but it doesn't cost as much. Sub second supplementary. Oh, we get one. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Locker was up first, I'm sorry. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, echoing uh, Councillor Moritz's points and thinking back to the industrial action uh, last week, uh, I wonder if uh, the Cabinet member uh, would agree with me that perhaps the only reason we haven't seen a stronger line from Ed Miliband in dealing with the unions on this is because he's now dependent upon them for 90% of Labour's funding, let alone his own appointment. <laughs> Not to mention, of course, Councillor, all the votes at the Labour Party conference as well. Imagine a scandal if a company was able to purchase votes at the Conservative Party conference. Were there to be any votes at the Conservative conference? <laughs> 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 uh, but no, uh, it is interesting to see the... Um, the complete failure of the Labour Party to engage on this particular issue. We see, uh, on the one hand, Labour MPs crossing the picket line, whereas at least one councillor in this chamber at the moment actually mandated a picket line uh, a few days ago. But we saw also uh, that, frankly, with the section of two areas of the council, the vast majority of staff in this council didn't go on strike. They came to work and did their job just as well as they normally do. But we do need to have a sensible debate about the changes that are required, because at the moment, these uh, pension arrangements simply cannot be afforded in the long term. Councillor Allen. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Question 43, please, to the Cabinet Member on behalf of the Chairman of Pensions, Scritti. 
I thank the Councillor for her question. As the answer indicates, uh, the, sa the savings will be financial and should be the order of at least £50,000 a year uh, for each authority that we share services with. Supplementary, Mr. Uh, Madam. Um, yes, will the Cabinet Member join me in congratulating those officers responsible for seeking out these efficiencies and cash savings? I, I, I certainly will, and in particular for seeking out, uh, almost quite deliberately, a council of a different political um, colour uh, from ours, because it shows that we are not just uh, working uh, cross-border and sharing services with particular councils, but we'll do it with anybody when we get a good deal from it. I don't think Councillor Davis is here, is he? Uh, question 44 on behalf of Councillor Davis. Uh, as the answer sets out, yes, I do believe uh, that will be of their interest and the Director of Finance is already in discussion with a number of other, other um, London boroughs. Councillor Wilkie. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Question 45 of the Cabinet Member for Strategic Planning and Transportation. I uh, thank the member for the, uh, the question. Um, I, we're well equipped, ready for the winter. That's pretty much where we are. Commentary, Madam Mayor. Yes, yeah, Councillor Wilkie. Um, how will your department um, publicise the availability of grit over the winter period? Um, there'll be a, a, um, a number of different ways um, of which we'll publicise it. There'll be three things, the press releases. Um, we'll also have articles in things like Brightside as well. Councillor Daly. Um, would the Cabinet Member explain what he'll be doing on roads which are uh, mainly inhabited by elderly people who are now expected to grit their roads themselves uh, uh, and uh, are already many of them in... No, there are many roads which have sheltered housing developments down them and they now be expected to clear them, their roads themselves. Uh, surely, would the Cabinet Member not agree with me that most people would consider gritting pavements uh, something they pay for in their council tax? <laughs> Seeing as the councillor is new, perhaps he doesn't understand that he needs to read all the questions in the sheet to understand what's going on. If he had gone to a question earlier on in the paper, it clearly responds to that accusation that the council is somehow making the elderly um, grit their own streets. It's a complete nonsense, and I would uh, expect uh, a more responsible opposition. Mr. Randall. Uh, question 46 of the Cabinet Member for Adult Care and Thank you, Madam Mayor. I thank the Councillor for her question. Um, the answer is quite specific. There are more than 1,000 older people regularly attending open access day services funded by the Council across the borough, um, and the existing level of funding is being retained under the new arrangements. Um, the comments regarding uh, we don't collect detailed information on the voluntary and community sector not funded by the Council although we are aware of these schemes and the services they provide. The demographics suggest that the 65-plus population of the borough will remain stable for the next two years, with a slight growth in the projected population of those over 85. Dr. Randall. Thank you. Um, first of all, I commend the Cabinet member for making sure that this level of funding does stay stable across the years, and I hope that continues to be the policy. However, with the change over to the hubs, there is a slight risk that the funding from some organisations who are already providing services being withdrawn, while we are not sure yet how the capacity of the newly, uh, the, the organisations are going to receive more funding will work out. So um, how is he intending to measure um, that the isolation is not increasing within the, in the borough when the consequence of any sort of reduction of service through those that are losing funding, for example, can be that people will stay at home and therefore will be invisible. I thank uh, the councillor for her supplementary question and for the comments at the beginning. Um, the point is that I think the contracts will be closely monitored. The take-up for the various hubs will be closely monitored. Uh, examined to ensure that there's no fall off in the people attending the service and one of the great benefits of the particular service is that unlike previous services to uh, the um, open access day services is that uh, they now get funding which is guaranteed for four years which allows them to make proper provision and project 
the way forward for the people attending their services and they can take uh, positive action to ensure that the, um, the funding is available there and they can, they can plan for the future. May I apologise, Just Cooper. Madam Mayor, um, by a complete oversight, I should also have declared um, that uh, I am a trustee of the First Down Project, um, which is in receipt of one of these four-year contracts uh, in relation to this question, and I should have declared that earlier. I apologise. So that wasn't a second supplementary. We haven't got one. Right. The time for questions is now over.